White House damage control after President Trump's response to the massacre in New Zealand. 50 people murdered by a man promoting white nationalist ideas. Despite that deadly attack, President Trump still claiming the threat from white nationalism is not on the rise. Now his acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, coming to the president's defense. The president's absolutely briefed on all of the threats, both domestic and international. Uh, but uh, I want to push back against this idea that every time something bad happens everywhere around the world, folks who don't like Donald Trump seem to blame it on Donald Trump. To the degree that there is an issue with white supremacists, white nationalists, anti-Muslim bigotry in this country, and there is an issue with that, why not deliver a speech condemning it? Right. You've seen the president stand up for religious liberties, individual liberties. The president is not a white supremacist. I'm not sure how many times we have to say that. All of this happening while the president's focus, according to his Twitter feed, is somewhere else. He's taking aim at the late Senator John McCain just months after his death for his ties to the controversial Russian dossier on Trump and McCain's notable thumbs down vote on repealing Obamacare while the president um, slamming uh, McCain for being last in his class at the U.S. Naval Academy. That was the president's tweet. CNN's White House correspondent Boris Sanchez joining me now. So, uh, Boris, let's begin with Mick Mulvaney's comments today. It's remarkable the acting chief of staff has to explicitly say the president is not a white supremacist. It is, Fred, and it's notable that Mulvaney became annoyed by the question. It's one that has certainly uh, plagued this White House before. Uh, critics did not like the president's response to the atrocity that we saw in New Zealand last week. Specifically, they're citing uh, the president's response when he was asked if white supremacy and white supremacist activity was an issue around the world. The president sort of downplayed that, even though there is evidence uh, that it is surging in certain areas. The president also failed to call out Islamophobia by name. Some felt his condemnation of the attack in New Zealand wasn't strong enough, including Representative Rashida Tlaib of Michigan. Listen to what she told Jake Tapper this morning. There is real data and information currently right now of the rise of white supremacy right here in this United States of America. Uh, he needs to look at the data and the information and the facts and actually listen and understand the tremendous responsibility he has in being our president, our leader of our country. He cannot just say it's a small group of people. There's too many deaths, not only from the synagogue to the black churches to the temples to the, now the mosques. We need to be speaking up against this, and it has to start with him. Uh, Fred, the White House has previously pushed back, saying that the president's uh, condemnation of the attacks in New Zealand was sufficient. Still, critics would like to see him respond to this sort of issue with the energy that he does uh, to Democrats or SNL or even the former Senator John McCain on Twitter. Fred. And now give us some context about why the president felt compelled to go after the late Senator John McCain on Twitter today. Right. Well, John McCain was actually one of the first people to see the Steele dossier, uh, some of that uh, salacious uh, information that was collected during the 2016 campaign. Uh, McCain denied that he ever shared that with journalists, but we know that at least one of his aides did. And some see that as a stain on McCain's legacy, including former investigator Kenneth Starr. Listen to what he told Fox News. But he said that he didn't have anything to do with passing on the dossier to the FBI. And yet now we know he did. Deeply disappointing. Uh, well, well, we'll see. That's what the evidence shows. You know, I'm one who keeps saying, don't rush to judgment, but that's what the evidence tends to show. And I'm just saying, I'm very, very saddened uh, by this. Look, yeah. John McCain was an American hero who did so much for the country, but this is uh, unfortunately a, a very dark stain. The president apparently watched this interview and decided to further express his disdain for uh, the late senator. He tweeted this out, uh, writing, quote, spreading the fake and totally discredited dossier is unfortunately a very dark stain against John McCain, Ken Starr, former independent counsel. He had far worse stains than this, including thumbs down on repeal and replace after years of campaigning to repeal and replace. Uh, John McCain's daughter, Megan McCain, tweeted back at the president, uh, very quickly, she fired back, writing, quote, no one will ever love you the way they love my father. I wish I had been given more Saturdays with him. Maybe spend years with your family instead of on Twitter 
obsessing over mine. The spat between these two prominent Republicans carrying on months after Senator McCain passed away. Let's not forget where this started many years ago in the summer of 2015 when President Trump said that John McCain was not a war hero, Fred. Yeah, he says my heroes don't don't get caught to that effect. All right, uh, Boris Sanchez, thank you so much. Our CNN political analysts are joining me right now. Senior White House correspondent for Bloomberg News, Margaret Taleb, and White House correspondent for The Atlantic, Elena Plot. Good to see you both. All right, let's talk about that stunning statement, you know, from Mulvaney. You know, the president is not a white supremacist. He took to the Sunday shows uh, today. Margaret, what is your reaction to why the chief of staff uh, felt like he had to defend the president in this manner. Well, because there's the the world is watching, so to speak, and uh, this is now. I think the president was probably trying to avoid spending a lot of time talking about this, but his response so far has created a controversy where we're now spending a lot of time talking about this. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, um, uh, assaults and intimidation of Muslims are on the rise across the United States and across uh, Canada the UK, Western Europe, uh, some top US allies, and, and the statistics just show that, and it's been the case for a number of years. And um, rather than sort of tackle the issue head on, uh, the president has, seems to have gone out of his way assiduously to use the word Muslims when talking about the victims. And so it's invited a lot of debate and discussion and consternation uh, to some extent politically among Democrats who are running for 2020, but also among many Muslims, American Muslims, Muslims throughout the world. And the U.S. presidency is a leadership role for the world. So when something catastrophic and incendiary like what happened happens, it's traditionally a U.S. president's role to try to take down the temperature, mm -hmm. to try to talk about unity, calm people, bring them together, yeah. and greatly discourage this kind of action in the future. And Elena, that was in exactly the premise in which the question was asked to Mulvaney about, you know, the, the president's demeanor, his word choice, lack thereof, you know, on the world stage. And, you know, you heard Mulvaney, you know, make the comment that, well, any time, you know, something bad happens, people don't need to be blaming the president. Uh, it's not that the president is receiving blame for what happened in New Zealand, but people are looking to mm -hmm. the the world's most powerful leader, you know, to comfort everyone and to condemn what took place. Well, I think, Fred, when you said lack thereof, that really is the key statement. And somebody like Mick Mulvaney finds himself in the exact position that many, many high-profile aides of Donald Trump often do in the unfortunate aftermath of these, you know, frequently on the rise tragedies. And it's not necessarily because they feel itching, they feel that they're itching to defend this president, but often the president doesn't say anything in the mm -hmm. aftermath of these sort of things, or he sends kind of the cursory tweet, and then he is fixating on the next thing. So of right, because he picks and chooses. He picks <laughs> right. and chooses when he wants to be very loquacious, and then there is silence. So the aides have to, in many ways, fill that void because they know when they go on the Sunday shows, this is what not only anchors are going to be looking to, mm -hmm. but what, what people across the country and the world are going to be looking to. If the president can't do it himself or chooses not to, that task will always fall upon whoever the chief of staff is at that moment. Mm -hmm. Here was another moment from Mulvaney this morning. I hear what folks say, say, oh, Donald Trump said this during the campaign. Look at what we've done while we've been here. I don't think anybody could say that, that the president is anti-Muslim. All right, so, so Margaret, what do you say to that? Because a whole lot of folks have been saying that, particularly after what happened in New Zealand, because they're recalling so many um, sentiments from the president from you know, the Muslim ban, travel ban uh, in this country. Well, and, you know, as a journalist, you look to his past statements and you also look to um, what, he, what he doesn't do and who he hasn't met with. And this is an opportunity in the week ahead uh, for a president, for example, to try to convene um, Muslim American leaders to talk about uh, concerns in their community. So we'll see uh, if anything like that happens. I think there's also the problem of some mixed messaging when you see the tweets uh, um, embracing uh, Jeanine Pirro, uh, jumping to her defense. Um, it, it's just, it, it's that combination of what he's saying and what he's not saying that's raising a lot of questions that the president himself kind of uniquely has the ability to clarify 
if he yeah. wants to, but uh, but then when he feels sort of besieged, rather than address the issue, he just sort of lashes out. And so mm -hmm. that's, I think, what we're seeing today. You know, and this coupled with, um, you know, the, the president's tweets this morning, his comments on the late Senator John McCain. So, Alino, you know, what what does the president feel that he has to gain um, to do this? The president takes things really, really personally, Fred. We know that at this point. And oftentimes, I think what frustrates aides in the White House who I talk to is a lot of times they don't see the fact that he's not addressing, um, say, what happened in New Zealand the other day as, you know, a, a, a big choice on his part, something really deliberate. It's just not at all what he's thinking about, which is another story entirely that the leader of the free world is choosing to focus not on one of the largest tragedies um, on the land of one of our allies, but instead what a late senator may or may not have done when it comes to um, Donald Trump's election back in 2016.